Um, we're going to get ready to start. So uh, have your setup ready and have a, maybe a couple of blocks. So this morning what we need for props are uh, our blankets, our blocks, and the chair if you've got one, or a counter or a wall, a bolster belt, the usual, the usual. And um, we can always improvise, so not to worry if you don't have the exact props. Um, most of us, when we travel, we find ways to make use of every possible thing as a prop, so I'm sure we're pretty good at it. Now sit up straight and tall. Draw, if you've been sitting here and cross legs, cross your legs the other way. And then when you start to sit, uh, start to lean forward a little bit. So take your buttock flesh and move it sideways and back a little bit. Now the reason we do that is to contact our sit bones. So find your sit bones in your awareness. It's not, it has to be mind, body, and lift your tailbone up. One reason we do this is to find the sit bones. The other reason we do this is to line up our sacrum and our shoulder blades. So as we lean forward, we take our spine with us, lift the chest, lift your chest, and then when you come back to a more upright position, your shoulders and your sacrum should line up, and the back of your head. So if you were sitting against a wall, your tailbone would be right at the wall. Very hard to do that. Your shoulder blades would be on the wall, and the back of your head would be lightly touching the wall. So that's the, that's the exact uh, posture that we want. But there's something else, and that's the, that's the lift, and then there's the broadening. So right across your chest, right across the top of your chest, broaden toward your collarbones, broaden toward your upper arms, broaden toward your armpits. Yeah, so this is the part that's the hardest for a lot of us. We can get the lift of the chest very well, but it's the part from the, um, toward the edges of the shoulder that tend to tilt forward. So draw your shoulders as broadly wide as you can, shoulder blades down in the back. And then take your hands beside you just for reference and balance. And just use this moment to sit up really tall. So feel like, the of course, the sacrum is lifting in and up. And the back of the waist is going forward, and the front of the waist is going back. So there's a narrowing through the waist and a pinning through the hips. It's what we call the sacral band. And then the side body lifts up as tall as you can. So from the hips to the armpits lift. And then bring your hands together in prayer. And when you bring your hands together in prayer, if you're like most of us, your hands are a little higher. They, uh, mine too. So draw your hands down so that you are um, more toward the bottom of your um, sternum with your thumbs. The sternum is a very long bone. And then draw your elbows down and your armpits up. So even sitting here, you should be able to feel that your arms affect your torso, that your arms and your legs and your torso are partners here. So your legs are trying to relax down, your torso is lifting up, and your arms are helping that by pulling the elbows down strongly to signal to your spine to lift up through all of that. Now try to find your center. Where is the center today? And are you centered front body to the back body? Side to side, right on the buttocks. Go in, prepare for yoga. And keeping your chest really lifted by your head to your heart. Bring your hands down to your thighs. Open your eyes in front of your shins and bring your head back up and straighten your legs. So the process of going inward is complicated. There's so many things to pay attention to. We're gonna cross our legs the second way now. So um, that is usually the, our habit, right? We go to one side and then the other, but thank goodness we go to the other side. I'm leaning side to side. So you might try that to get yourself 
right on your sit bones as much as you can. And then front, put your hands on your thighs. And draw. And so your hands are on your thighs, just softly. Like broaden your hands and just connect. Connect your hands to the thigh skin that you can feel and draw your elbows down and your armpits up. So there's quite a big action through the torso. Now I'm gonna mirror you. Take your um, left hand to your right knee and then take your right hand behind you. I'm gonna move a block behind me. Um, sometimes a block helps behind you. But now we're gonna center yourself. So we're still looking straight forward. But notice that once you bring the arm over, you've really initiated the twist a little bit, but we're still centering the spine and we're not gonna change that. Center your spine. Feel like your spine is right in the center of your side body, your front and back body, and then draw your uh, left ribs around and forward toward me. Take your left ribs and start moving them. And as you do that, take your right elbow and bend it slightly and move it back so that the arms are acting here. The front arm, of course, is, is you're using it. You're using it for reference and to pull a little bit, but not a lot. This more has to do with your spine turning. So it has to do with your skin turning on your outer body. Take your left ribs forward and your right ribs back. Keep your spine centered. Keep looking forward for a second and then let your head start moving in line with your chest. No further, right in line with your chest and take your right shoulder blade down. And now you should feel quite a bit of activity through your abdomen and then start turning a little more even. And as you turn more, keep your head in line with your spine and that is the center of your chest until you get to a place where you think you could look just a little bit toward your right collarbone but that is only if you can. And then you're gonna keep all the activity and the action of your torso so strong and you're coming back to center. And then you're gonna take your uh, right hand to your left knee and your left hand behind you. Now again, we've initiated quite an action by taking our arm across and holding onto the knee. So we, then we lift our spine up. That helps us think, now we're gonna turn, but I don't wanna turn by leaning. So we're sitting straight up and straight up. And then we start turning, drawing the right ribs forward. So the right ribs start coming around and the left ribs start moving back. And the spine stays right in the center. And then the left elbow can bend a little bit as you pull with the right hand and you take the uh, left elbow back behind you more. So really lift up straight and tall, and then your head center in, centered right in line with your chest, lifting up your chest, and then turning more and more and more. And possibly you could look then over your left shoulder, over toward your left collarbone. But you make that decision because you know how your neck feels. And then come back to center, holding your abdomen very firm and then straighten your legs up. And look at your legs in Dandasana. So make sure that the knees are centered and that the shins are squeezing in. And move, uh, lean onto your right buttock and take the left buttock flush sideways and lean onto the left buttock and take the right buttock skin sideways and then lift your tailbone up. Your legs should feel quite firm and stretching. So um, even here, we're talking about hamstrings today, so Diane, we were talking about your hamstring. Don't, don't feel like you have to, don't press your knees down. If you press your knees down, that activates the hamstrings in the wrong way. We don't want just stretchy hamstrings. We want strong hamstrings, and we're actually going to do something to strengthen our hamstrings today, um, even before Diane told me about her hamstring. So sit up straight and tall. And now we're going to cross our legs, um, but let's all go the same direction. So take your right shin in front. And now you might want blocks beside you um, if you feel like leaning over onto your hand is too much. You might want to have a block to lean onto. But what we're going to do is first we're going to sit up as straight and tall as we can. And our right shin is in front and our feet are very um, flexed. 
flex your feet so that the outside of your feet have some purchase on the floor, and then straight up with your spine. And now breathe. And we're going to take our right hand, I'm mirroring you, to the floor. But when we take our hand to the floor, we are not forgetting that the side body equality is important. I don't want to lengthen one side of my body and cramp the other side. Sometimes we do, so don't get me wrong. Sometimes we do. But I want you to keep the right side body as tall as you can. So your other hand is coming to your waist. And when your other hand comes to your waist, the elbow um, extends. So feel like from the left armpit to the left elbow, there's quite an exaggerated um, length. And then you're leaning into your right hand, but your right torso remains lifted, although curved. Everything is curving now to the right, but that doesn't mean we collapse. So lift your chest even and breathe. And then kind of feel your neck. So sometimes when we go to the side, our neck says something to us. So you might want to drive the trapezius skin down and then come back up. And now we're going to go to the other side, which could be different for you. So be, pay attention. Put your left hand down, but lengthen the left side body and put your right hand on your waist. So when we do this, we are really um, defining the torso. We are really connecting with the sides of the torso because the elbow on the right side is really moving away. And the armpit on the right side is lengthening and breathe and breathe. <laughs> so side body long, side body long. And then come back to center. And now we're gonna cross our legs the second way, which is left chin in front. I'm mirroring you. And we're gonna go back to this side. Uh, it's a side stretch. And I've gotten some, pretty interested in side stretches for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that a side stretch to the right and a side stretch to the left are two ways that our spine curves. <laughs> so we don't, sometimes we don't think about that, but that's really important. Take your right hand down to the floor and lift your left, right side body. And already the left side body is quite long, I know. And now you can keep your hand on your waist if that's better for your shoulder or your neck, or you can bring your arm straight up. So if you bring your arm straight up, then from the hip to the fingers, tips lengthen. With your mind, just go through your side body and lengthen. The right, the left outer hip is down. You're not lifting it up. And then you're going to take your arm over your head, but keep lifting your right side body. Keep lengthening your right side body as you go. And then come back to center and put your left hand down and take your right arm up. So we're going to try this and see how this goes on this side. Left side body no long. You don't want to feel collapsed there. Certainly the right side body has all the length and you feel that. But create length on the left side body to take your arm over and breathe. So you're taking your arm over just to increase the stretch. And maybe think about where the stretch is most obvious to you. Is it the armpit? Is it the rib area? Keep the right hip down. And then come back to center. And then straighten your legs out. Straighten your legs out and just recalibrate the sit bone knee connection. You'll notice that if you're sitting too heavily on one sit bone, things kind of don't work so well. And then we don't want to overly stretch the back of our, our knees. I mean, we don't want to press them down. And that's something that can happen in poses. So we want to keep the knee uh, not, not too bent, but a little bit. And then bring your arms up over your head. So stretch your arms up as tall as you can. As you stretch your arms up, your quadriceps are pressing down. I know, they have to. Stretch your arms up, trapezius goes down. Abdomen comes back, armpits open even more. And then breathe and just gently, gently turn your torso, but nothing else, just the torso, the waist toward the right. So your uh, left ribs are coming with you around. Your right ribs are going back behind. Well, not much, are they? It's hard when you don't, are not using your arms on your knees to get a twist here. Come back to center. 
and then go toward the left. Keep really tall, keep really tall. The trapezius needs to go down, don't let it lift. Breathe. And then come back to center, and then take your thumbs forward and just bring your arms down in a wide sweeping action. Very nice. Now come to your hands and knees. So come onto your hands and knees for a minute. Just for a minute. And uh, let's see. Maybe I think I'm good here. So we're just going to do a cat cow stretch. Um, so the cat cow stretch is hands and knees, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, round your back up toward uh, the ceiling in a cat stretch. So you're drawing your abdominal skin up. Draw your abdominal skin up, your belly button up as much as you can, and then breathe and start taking your, uh, curve your back the other way. So you're drawing your, che your chest through your upper arms and your buttocks are up. So now there's a curve in your lower back that is going the opposite direction that it was just going. So these are the two other curves. So we've got the curve to the left, the curve to the right, the curve up and the curve down. So now I'll create the curve up again into the cat stretch so that you're really drawing your spine up as best you can and your abdomen should help breathe and then come forward, chest through the upper arms and breathe. Your trapezius skin goes back. Good and then come down. Now we're going to do something that I want to, um, the props for it are what I want to talk about. You, if it's, I'm going to use two blankets for my head, two blocks for my shoulders. So I, I'm setting up so that my shoulders are going to be on these blocks and my head is going to be on the blanket. I would also want to have a wall, but I'm not going to have one in this position. I've got one right behind me, but I'm not going to turn away from you like that. And you might not have a wall. So another idea is um, a kind of a, bowl, a blanket or a bolster just for your hands. So what you would really ideally want is the same level for your shoulders, your head, and your hands basically. And then you're going to lie down with your shoulders on the blocks. Now, if you don't have a lot of props, you could use one block for your shoulders sideways and one block for your head. I mean, there's lots of ways to set this up. But once you lie down, your shoulders are going to be on the, the um, blocks. Your head is going to be on the blankets and your arms are going to stretch toward an imaginary wall, but that you, for the height of it, you need a blanket. And then your knees are bent for a minute. So I'm, I'm just checking to see everybody's got a setup that they like of some kind. It takes a while to get into these poses, doesn't it, <laughs> with props? Sometimes the teacher is saying, okay, do this, do that. And you're like, wait, 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 uh, where are my props? But if you are where you um, can get into your pose, then bend your knees and have your feet on the floor. So um, when your feet are on the floor, have your ankles and your knees right in line with your feet. In other words, um, don't let your knees go uh, wide or narrow. Try to keep your, you, your feet should be hip width, I would say. Your feet should be hip width at the moment, at the moment. Uh huh. Good. And then you're stretching. And if your shoulders don't like this, so Paula, if for some reason your shoulders really didn't like this, you could have your arms beside you, okay? 
So we just want to make sure everybody's happy. But the idea here is to stretch. So now I'm going to join you and we're going to stretch toward our hands. And then when, when we have our hands and our awareness and our head on the blanket and another something for our hands, our feet are on the floor, our knees are right over that. Then I'm going to take my hands as if I'm going to do handstand against the wall. So you want to take the heel of your hand over the fingers, which are going to point down. And I'm just using my blanket that I've now got for my hands for reference. So your fingertips could be on the blanket and the heel of your hand would come over the, um, would come over that. So your hands, if you were on a wall, would be flat, which would mean that you're really stretching your arms. So stretch your arms toward your hands and breathe, and then keep your hands like this and straighten both legs and bring them together. And then, just because of the way we are as humans, take your hands behind your head, pick your head up and look at your legs and see if your legs are coming out of the center or if you've somehow gone to the side, one side or the other. Your legs are right together, squeeze your legs together. Now restate your hands. Pull the heel of your hand away from the elbow, away from the, you know, the wrist almost, and then fingers are pointing straight down. This is of course only what you can do, but now pay attention to your legs and pay attention to your inner legs right at the top. So the inner legs right at the top slightly gently roll down toward the floor. Abdomen is very long. There's a curve in your lower back and you're breathing and you're breathing. So you want to feel like the legs are in Tadasana. And the arm, this is uh, Supta Tadasana, but it's all, that's, that's also the same position as hit the hands down the feet. So you're stretching into your hands and breathing and breathing best you can. And then you're going to release that and roll to the side. So that's a big stretch through your torso and your legs. And both torso and legs participate in this. Now we're going to take the blocks away and take any extra blanket away that you were using. And you're going to lie down again, but this time you're going to put your calves on the two blankets. So your back will be on the floor, your buttocks will be on the floor, and your calves are going to rest on the two blankets. <clears throat> Which we don't usually do. So if you think, well, I, I, don't, use, I don't do this, that's true. You probably don't do this. But it's a really interesting and safe way to work on your legs. So your calves are on the, the blanket. Probably your feet, heels are knocked. And then, then bring your legs right together. Bring your legs right together. I'm trying to decide if I want to have my blankets long, you know, long and narrow. Oh, I think I do. Then my heels can actually be on the, on the blanket. But once you get here, then you have to broaden your buttock skin. So take your hands to the outside of both hips and just broaden through the sacrum. I'm not saying flatten the sacrum. Your sacrum is not flat. Your back of your waist is up. Your hands are beside you now, uh, palms down, and right by the hips. So palms down by the hips. Then you pick, press your elbows down, lift your bottom shoulder blades up, and just replace them a little lower. We're trying to get more onto the uh, shoulders, uh, shoulder blades. And then press your calves down. So one thing I, I'm going to say is I got my knees on this blanket and I don't want the knees on the blanket. So just have your calves, but not your knees, not the back of your knees on the blanket. 
and then press your calves down and stretch through your inner legs as much as you can. So once you press your calves down and you stretch through your inner feet, inner balls of your feet, you should feel your quadriceps quite active. So lengthen the quadriceps toward the feet and press the belly button toward the spine and lift the chest away from all that. And so you should feel like you're um, on a rack practically being pulled, your feet are being pulled away from you. And with your hands pressing, your chest is moving the other direction. So breathe, breathe. And then release the activity because that's a lot of activity. You don't even think about it, but it's a lot of activity in your um, quads. Now do it again, press through, the, press, through, press through the heels this time. Calves are obviously on the blanket. Press through the heels, press through the heels, and then start stretching the balls of the feet away. Now my heels are not even on the blanket. Yours probably are not either, which is interesting, isn't it? Stretch through the inner legs best you can, and then gently draw the hamstrings up into the bone. Uh, contract the hamstring softly up toward the femur. So press your um, elbows down, chest is up, feet are lengthened, legs are long, just draw the hamstrings up toward the femur bone. And then relax and recognize that your hamstrings are usually not anywhere near your femur and your quadriceps aren't either. We're trying to squeeze every action, every part of our leg toward the femur bone. Try it again. Stretch your heels and your feet and your legs and your abdomen and breathe. So we're as long as we possibly can, but notice now, the more you work your legs, the more your spine is free to lift and lengthen. And lift by that I mean towards your head. So we're stretching away from our hips and breathe. Now release all that. So you know, you really do feel the activity of your legs, but it's not in a way that's harmful. Now I'm going to scoot a little bit toward my setup and, and put, your feet on the, put your feet on the blankets. So the, now you have your feet on the blankets and your hands are still beside you. Now your feet are separate and your knees are separate. Your feet are not together, your knees are not together. This is gonna be a little teeny setu bandha. It's very little, so just press your feet down before you do anything else, press your feet into the blanket, it's kind of nice. It's not a hard wood, it's a nice soft surface. And then breathe and lift your buttocks up a little bit. So lift your buttocks up and draw your hamstrings toward your femur bone. So you're contracting the hamstrings toward the femur bone, but softly, softly, even though the ham hamstrings are um, certainly in your awareness, and then release that. So I hope you felt the hamstrings as they contracted versus when they're not contracting. That's, that's the lesson here. Pick your buttocks up, heels down, metatarsals down, and then your buttocks are, it's not a regular Sajibanda. You're not lifting your hips up so high. You're drawing your hamstrings up so high. So it's like the back of the legs are drawing up just gently. But once they do that, they contract. That's the, but the, hand, but the quadriceps are lengthening. So the two are partners, quadriceps and uh, hamstrings. And then come down and roll over to the side and take, that, uh, take the blankets away. So now we just have a sticky mat and come to your hands and knees. So what we just did with the hamstrings is something that when people really strain a hamstring, that's one of the ways to work on it, is to gently contract the hamstring. The hamstring needs to strengthen once it's been overstretched. So now we're coming to our hands and knees, hands slightly in front of the shoulders, and knees slightly behind the hips, not a lot. And then press, look at your hands and press them down. And the inner hand down, especially, uh, because the outer hand is happy to be down, but the inner hand sometimes needs encouragement. Press the inner wrist, inner thumb mound down and 
stretch from the wrist, inner wrist, to the inner elbow. So stretch up to the inner elbow, and you should look at your elbows, and they should be pointing toward each other, eyes at the elbow toward each other. And from the inner elbow up to the inner armpit, lift, and then hold your abdomen firm, lift your buttocks up, come into downward facing dog, and you can keep, you probably should keep your knees bent. So one way to do it is to bend your knees and take your chest toward your thighs. So don't take your ribs any more than you're taking your chest. So your head is almost pointing straight down and you're pressing through your hands strongly, stretching through your inner arms strongly. Outer arms are squeezing in. And then, then lift your sit bones way up. You can, heels should be way up. Sit bones should be way up. Knees can still be bent or not, but the heels are way up. And then look at your heels. You can see, is one heel more obvious to you than the other? Correct that. Make sure the knees, are, the knees and the heels are doing exactly the same thing side to side. Breathe, stretch up now through the side body, and then bend your knees and come down. And take your knees wide and child's pose. So you might want to bring the blocks back in and a blanket for your head if that's uh, appropriate, but child's pose, just a nice long child's pose. So the hips are on the heels or toward the heels or uh, resting on a bolster or a blanket, something for reference between the buttocks and the heels. And then the arms are just stretching out in front of you, lengthening, lengthening. So now just look to between your hands a little bit and lengthen your armpits and then bring your head back down. So stretch your hands out as far as you can and your buttocks back as far as you can, child's pose. Um, of course, child's pose, if you have problem shoulders, uh, hands can be back by the hips and maybe should be. So you have to be careful. And then come back to hands and knees. So hands and knees again, or downward facing dog. But be on your hands and knees and lengthen your inner arms first. So feel like your inner arms are really lengthening and your outer arms are supporting you with a, uh, with a firmness, triceps hugging in, inner arms lengthening, abdomen picking up toward the spine, come into your pose, downward facing dog. Stay high on the heels, so you're on your metatarsals, you're on your toes, and you're lengthening your torso. You, if you need to bend your knees, you sh should, and it's no problem. So bend your knees or not, it doesn't matter, and strengthen your front body toward the uh, pubis. So you're strengthening and lengthening. You're holding your abdomen in, but you're lengthening it. So si the front body gets really long, but the back body does too. Your shoulders are moving up toward your hips. Well, they're not really, but that's the action. And then start drawing your legs back, 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 trying to take your heels a little lower maybe, if whatever is good for you, armpits wide open, breathing. Breathing. Good, good, good. And then come down. So we know to not irritate the hamstrings in this pose. And you can do that easily by bending your knees. And I'm saying that for you know who. <laughs> Don't overdo. All right. So now just sitting in Vajrasana or simple, simple uh, cross legs on something, but just sitting for a second and take your hands behind you. So I'll sit sideways. Take your hands behind you and interclasp your hands or hold a belt and pull your hands down. So you're pulling your hands down and your chest up. And you should feel the minute you do that, the back, your middle back, which is the latissimus dorsi, is squeezing in toward the spine. The shoulders are going down, but they're squeezing toward each other, right? And so the spine is moving in toward the front body. It's hiding. Because once the back folds the way it does toward the spine, the spine goes in. And then come to hands and knees. So hands and knees again. If you need a chair, I should have said this, 
if you need a chair, have a chair. I mean, I'll use a chair. I, chairs are wonderful. So they're another way of doing downward facing dog. If you need a chair, be sure you, I'm sure you were using one, you know. And then just lengthen your torso. Whatever your choice, come, in, come into your pose, lengthen your torso, lengthen your torso, lengthen your torso as much as you can. So that means open your armpits, squeeze your outer arms in, lengthen your inner arms. Inner arms and the torso are one package here. You're stretching through your inner arms towards your pubis, and you're stretching through your inner arms towards your hands. Outer arms are hugging in. Breathe. Breathe. And then come down, just for a second. We're going to do it again. But we're going to take our feet together now. So, um, and on a chair as well. So if you're on a chair, your feet are together. And if you're on the floor in regular dog, your feet are going to be together. So come up into your pose, feet are together, pull your inner thighs back. So pull your inner thighs away from your chest, away from your belly button, and breathe and pick the right leg up and stretch it. Stretch the right leg as far back toward the wall or the space behind you as stretch through the heel, flex the foot. Breathe and then bring that leg down. Now, of course, this is on the hamstrings. You have to bend your knee if your hamstring is, if hamstrings are bothering you. Left leg, straight, straight left leg, straight left leg, breathe. Breathe. So pushing through the heel and then bring your foot down. And then if you're on a chair, bend your knees, step forward. If you're in dog pose, bend your knees, come down. And then stand up. Then stand up and we're going to use um, a chair or a block. So the next pose is supported um, Uttanasana. I'm gonna move my computer up and then you can maybe see the options a little better. I wanna show you first an option for um, supported Uttanasana. That's supported forward bend that, that uses a chair and uses your forearms. You put your forearms on the chair and you step your feet back. Your feet are separate. You're in a Uttanasana with your feet separate and you pull your thighs back, but you're resting your forehead. So this is one option. So don't do that quite yet. We'll, we'll come into it in a second. The other option is uh, certainly more for people who are uh, used to doing this pose and they're comfortable doing it this way because you have to really measure the effects of this pose on your front body, your back body, and your hamstrings. So in this version of it, you take your feet a little wider to start with, you bend your knees, and you put your head down on a block. So my head is right on a block now, and, and I'm not on my forearms, I'm on that, my head right where I would be in headstand, and I'm just gonna stretch my legs, and take my elbows to the side, holding on to my ankles. This is another way to do it. So either Uttanasana, head on a block, or Uttanasana, head on your forearms on a chair, or a counter, or not the wall though. If this is your option, um, if you need a wall instead, you could do a right angle pose. But yeah, okay, this is good, this is good. All right, everybody's made some good choices. If you, no matter what, bend your knees because you know you you know how much your hamstrings are, and especially you know anybody with ham, hamstring issues, you have to bend your knees and work your legs that way. Good, 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 you guys. This is this is a pose that is very calming, even though it is somewhat. Um, Confusing. It worries you a little bit, I know, but it is calming. So relax your face, relax your jaw, let the skin on your back body soften. And 
just be here. Be here. As you're here, pull your quadriceps up. Your quadriceps have to really act here. They pull up and they pull back. And try to accentuate the abdominal pelvic area by lengthening between the belly button and the pubis and use your back body to sort of relax the skin on your back body. Your abdomen is a little firmer. Breathe. If you had your forms on the chair, you have to take your forms the other way. If you're still standing with your head on a block, I know you're enjoying it a lot. I'm just kidding. When you get there, you're like, wow, I have got to find a way to be in this pose. Now bend, whatever your choice, bend your knees. If your head is on a block, take your hands back by your hips and really lift your chest up when you come up, firming your legs. If your hands were on a chair, you can just come up. So I, that was a lot, wasn't it? It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of effort and effort requires will. And so when you're in a forward bend like that and your head is down on something and you're, it is, somebody asked me, why do we hold the poses? Why do we hold them for any length of time? And one of the reasons is because that's how we learn to behave in these poses. If you just do it for a second or two, you just kind of muscle your way through it. But if you have to stay there for a minute, you start working your legs a little differently, I'm sure. I know I did. Okay, try it again. That's why I said that. Try it again. If, if you just could not stand that, then really bend your knees deeper, much deeper, and just put your head on a block or, or put your forearms on the chair. But if really that was too much for you, Bend your knees a lot deeper. And relax your face. That's the other part. There, there's nothing that your eyebrows, your eyeballs, your forehead, or your jaw can do to help you here. This is really more about you uh, working your legs and trying to use the action of your legs to soften your back. So the stronger you're, even with bent knees, your legs are very strong. Push your heels down. Push your heels way down. And then bend your knees if you need to. That's just fine. This is more about the length of the spine when it's coming forward. So using your legs, using your legs, breathing. Then, now we're going to come up. So if you're using the chair, then just... Take your hands uh, out of the forearm position and take your hands back by your hips. If your head is on the block, take your hands back by your hips, firm your thighs, lift your chest, inhale and come up. So um, that is considered calming. That is considered a calming, cooling pose. The next one we're gonna do is Prasarada Padottanasana. That is another pose that is considered cooling. And by cooling, I don't mean your temperature cools off, although it does. It's really cooling for your um, nervous system. So if you're going to join me here, you're gonna take your feet wide. Now, what if, you're, um, what if your hamstrings bother you? I would say two things. Your feet don't need to be quite so wide and your knees can bend a little bit. But if you're okay, Put your hands on your hips, take your feet wide, and um, I actually think if you need something to put your head on, have it. We're not gonna start with our head down, but our head will go down. So your legs are wide, and we still have our hands on our hips. Stretch your inner legs towards your outer legs. Stretch your outer legs from the hips down into your heels. So stretch down towards your heels with your outer legs. Draw the inner legs toward the outer legs. 
So the inner legs are stretchy, the outer legs are strong. Now try to take your elbows a little more toward each other and lift your spine up even more. So now lift your chest up as high as you can. That firms your legs. Hold on to your legs firmly. Come forward. Bring your hands down under your shoulders and lift your chest forward. You, if you need blocks for your hands, that's fine. Uh, chest forward, hands down. So this is a lot like the arms of dog pose. So inner arms are really stretchy up toward the collarbones. Outer arms are firm just to provide support. Abdomen stretches through. Take care of your neck now. Don't overlift your neck. Don't, don't do anything with your head that would make your neck uh, complain. Take the trapezius shoulder blade skin back. Firm your thighs. Lift your chest. Breathe. So this is uh, Prasarga Padottanasana 1 with the legs so strong, the arms so strong, and the chest just moving as far forward as you can. Then you're going to bend your elbows and put your head on something. So if you put your head on a blanket or right on the floor, whatever it is for you, it needs to rest. And it needs to rest down on that surface. Then your neck skin and your shoulder skin lift up softly. So this is very uh, interesting because some of us do it one way, others of us do it another way. We have to take care of ourselves. You can always have narrower feet if you need to and knees a little bit bent if you need to and breathe. So this is another one, head down. This is another one of those poses where the head is down and the eyes are soft. You have to control the facial muscles and relax them. Also, if you're, when your head is down, then you, maybe you can take your hands back a little further so that your um, wrists and elbows line up and squeeze your upper arms in toward your inner arms just for the strength of it. And then breathe and straighten your arms and lift your chest through your upper arms again. So uh, going back to Supta Padangus, uh, I mean, I mean uh, Prasarga Padottanasana 1. So we come back through this upper arm, chest lifting forward spine lengthening, legs really strong. Now, it might be possible to put your hands on your hips here or, or walk your feet in a little bit, but if you can bring your hands to your hips, you do. So now we're back up with our legs wide and our chest lifted and our elbows. So take your elbows both toward each other and down and lift your chest up. And then walk your feet in a little bit and bring your feet back to Tadasana. Tadasana, mountain pose. So now, because our feet were wide, it takes a second to get your feet to be organized when they're together. You, see, you realize that, you think, oh, this is interesting. When my feet are wide, there's one feeling. When my feet are together, there's another feeling. So the next pose is um, an inversion of some kind. Shirshasana, if you have a Shirshasana practice, then set up for that right now. If, you, uh, if your neck doesn't appreciate Shirshasana or shouldn't do it, legs up the wall or dolphin pose. So those three choices, um, legs up the wall, dolphin pose or Shirshasana. So if you're going into Shirshasan, you're firming your forearms down, you're lifting your shoulders up, you're placing your head, you're walking in, and you're carefully going up. 
and I can't necessarily see you if you're, you know, you might have gone somewhere to do this, but you know the action. Forearms down, shoulders up, neck long, breathing. Good. Now, if you're in Shirshasana, you draw your legs toward each other best you can and inner heels up. If you're in dolphin pose, there's a little different situation. If you're in dolphin pose, you want to feel like your forearms are strongly down and your shoulders are up, but you can't stay as long as you do in headstand. So you have to do more than one. That's the way we deal with it. You have to do more than one if you're in um, dolphin pose. But I wanna say, if you're in legs at the wall, people think, oh, that must be so easy. And it is in a way, but if your legs are up the wall, you feel a lot of energy into your heart, your lungs, your inner organs, and your mind. It's not, it's not just doing nothing. When you take your legs up the wall, that changes everything. It changes the blood flow. So your heart is a, really has a different relationship to your legs than when you were standing. So legs up the wall is very profound too. If you're in Shishasana, continue to lift, lift, lift through your spine up towards your heels. If you're in dolphin pose, uh, you've probably done it twice. So rest in child's pose between it and do one more dolphin pose, but not to overdo on dolphin because it's harder. We, you don't realize when you're in Shishasana how much the legs are helping you. <laughs> the legs up over your uh, spine in Shishasana makes the pose light. Even though your shoulders are lifting and your forearms are pressing and everything is strong, the lightness comes into the pose because your legs are up. Now, if you're in dolphin pose, be sure you come down and rest in child's pose. If you're in headstand, and those of you who I can see, everybody looks really good. I can't see everybody because of the positions that um, our walls are at and all that. But we're going to start coming down. So if you're in shishas and you're pressing your forearms down so strongly that that's going to protect your back when you come down. If you're in legs up the wall, you're bending your knees and you're rolling over to the side. And then whatever your choice was, shirshasan, dolphin, or legs up the wall, we're going to do child's pose. So have your um, set up for child's pose if you need blocks or something for your head. We always do a child's pose after an inversion like this for a couple of reasons. One is to lengthen the lower back. So feel like your lower back is lengthening in child's pose, but also that your head is resting. Just rest your forehead and feel how your neck feels and your shoulders feel. The skin now on your back is both going forward and back toward the head and toward the tailbone, but it's also going sideways. Feel like the shoulder blade skin is just spreading sideways. The rib skin on the back just spreading sideways. Everything is just nice and soft and stretchy and breathe. So now our blood pressure it has been restored. We don't really worry about our blood pressure after a pose like this because it will restore. But we do this to honor our blood pressure. So now carefully come up. And we know, of course, if we have blood pressure issues that we've already addressed this with our teacher and we know how to deal with it course. The next pose is shoulder stand. So I say shoulder stand and by that I mean using a regular setup for shoulder stand or using a chair for shoulder stand is just fine or the other option is a great one, two options. One is to do setu bandha with a block under your sacrum so that that becomes setu bandha vikarita karani with your legs up. The other choice is Viparita Karani, with your, just plain old Viparita Karani with your legs on a wall, with your buttocks on a bolster. So make your choice and set your spot up. <clears throat> and I'm, 
I'm checking you out because I'm curious what setups we have. If I can see you, that doesn't mean I can see you. Sometimes we have to leave and go somewhere else. Okay, we've got chairs, we've got blocks. Good. So if you're, um, so whatever your choice, come into it. And if you're on a block, the sooner you can, the, as soon as you can, just straighten your legs up. If you're in shoulder stand, um, then you know what you're doing there too. But a lot of us are using a block and that's because that's what we have. And it's a great option. Those of you who are using a chair for chair shoulder stand, that looks really good too. Looks really nice. Uh huh. There's a couple of ways to use a chair, but the way I see it right now is with the buttocks on the chair and the shoulders on some sort of a lift. And that looks wonderful. So breathe. So if you are using a block, then uh, bend your knees and put your feet on the floor. So if you're using a block under your buttocks, bend your knees and put your feet on the floor. If you're in shoulder stand, stay where you are. So yes. Now, if you're using the block, then lift your right leg straight up. Yeah, good. So the block, you're lifting your leg straight up. Uh -huh. Good. Now lift the other leg up if you can. Can you lift both legs up and be in this pose? That's the question. It depends on your hamstrings, doesn't it? So you could go back and forth between one leg lifting and the other leg lifting. That would be an option but you definitely want to try and uh, create this length through your legs that is really strong action up while your uh, torso is, is really down. So breathing, just be sure you're breathing, feeling, feeling that everything is going correctly for you. Now, if you're in chair shoulder stand, or if you're on a block, and if you are comfortable lifting both legs up on the block, then, then all of us are gonna take our legs wide. So on a chair, you can take your legs wide. On a block, you can take your legs wide. Stretch through your heels, stretch through your heels, stretch through your outer legs, uh-huh. That's really nice, that's really nice. Good. So this sometimes feels really nice because it gives you some action to do also. So then bring your legs right back together using the outer legs strongly, using your outer legs strongly. Good, good. Make sure your chest is as lifted as it can be, no matter where you are. If you're on a block, if you're on a chair, uh huh. Good, and breathe, and breathe. If you're on the block now, and you, you know, the being on the block is great, but you have to just make sure that your sacrum is set perfectly on that block. So if you're on a chair, it's always the same issue too. It's like, where are your buttocks on the chair? You want to feel like your spine is free to stretch and your chest is free to move toward your chin. Uh-huh, good. Now, if you're using a chair, it's time to start coming down. If you're in regular um, uh, shoulder stand, it's time to start coming down. And if you're on a block, lift your buttocks up and take the block to a lower level. Good. And then whenever you uh, are on the block and you can take the block away entirely, then you lengthen your lower back. Good. So now, um, if you are down and you're ready to come into child's pose, child's pose is the next, is the next. And child's pose again, we do uh, for the same purposes we did in headstand. So these are two very important inversions, uh, Shushasana and Sarvangasana. And we can practice them 
using a lot of different ways. So it's, these are the two probably most important poses. When Gita Iyengar was asked if she could only do two poses a day, what would they be? She said, headstand, shoulder stand. She said, you should do them every day. But of course, if you do headstand, you have to do shoulder stand. You cannot ignore shoulder stand. So those are two are partners. You can do shoulder stand without headstand, but not the other way. Now, child's pose, just make it nice and comfortable and long and restful for a moment. Just nice and restful. And now come up, come up from all of that. And um, we are going to uh, work on uh, Janu Shishasana. So we're going to need maybe a couple of blankets and um, a belt perhaps, and maybe a bolster and another blanket or a chair. Now, I say all this not meaning that we're necessarily going to do a completed pose, but for, I'm going to turn my, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways at various points. So for right now, I'm going to turn my sticking out and put my blankets down so that I'm, my torso is facing you. So I'm going to use two blankets. You have to use what you need. Uh, but probably two blankets will be a good start. And then we're going to, just for a moment, sit on your blankets in Dandasana. <clears throat> and when you sit on your blankets in Dandasana, sit on it such that your buttocks are on the blanket and maybe a tiny bit of your upper hamstrings, but not too much and then just stretch out through the legs and put your hands beside you and lift your chest. So before we do anything, we're gonna lift and center our whole spine. If you're in Dandasana now, uh, be sure that you're really stretching through both legs evenly into the inner feet, into the inner ball of the feet and draw the elbows back and chest up. Breathe. So this is just, to sort of get our consciousness centered in our spine again. When you're upside down, it's very good for the spine as well. But now we're right side up and the head is reaching toward the ceiling and the elbows are bending and stretching away from the shoulders down. Now um, we're, I'm gonna mirror you. So we're going to, and this I hope you, um, if you don't know this pose, that you listen and, and not worry about it. But the first thing we're going to do is our um, left leg is going to be the straight leg and our right knee is going to bend. So I'm holding on to the back of my right knee. I'm mirroring you. I'm not, that's not my right knee, but it will be yours. I'm holding on to it and I'm holding on to the outside of the foot. So then I draw the foot down to the floor. And the ideal is for the heel of the right heel to touch the right groin, in, uh, the inner leg of the right thigh, and then the toes are under the other thigh. And then, you, of course, you, you're now you're right in the center, probably looking between your two knees. And then you're going to take your awareness to your left hand and put it down beside you so that you turn your torso away from the knee. But if your knee bothers you in any way, and so I have to be, we don't want to hurt our knee. If we hurt our knee because we are so anxious, because we don't know what else to do and so we suffer, that's not correct. We don't want to do that. If you have a knee problem, you have to sit up higher. You have to support the knee with something. And maybe you need to take your foot a little bit further away from your inner thigh, but don't tell the straight hand I said that. But I think that might help the knee compression issue. But if it's all copacetic, bring your legs into Janu Shishasana and turn away from your right knee by using your left hand beside you 
and your uh, right hand on the outside of your left thigh. And then, but don't go anywhere, just lift up so straight and tall. So we're not going anywhere. We're lifting straight up with our torso and we're being aware of our right knee because that is an important part of the pose. The right knee, the left leg, and the torso. Sit up straight and tall. Now, um, you're turning your chest probably toward your knee, but are you turning your ribs? So sitting up as tall as you can, turn your ribs and your abdomen more toward your left leg. And that, that requires a lot of length through the lower back, I think. So lift up really tall, and we're just moving in line. So now you should feel like, gosh, the right knee is very, very connected to the surface it's on, but really the activity now is over the left leg. And then come back to the center part and stretch your right leg and pay attention to how your right leg feels, how your hamstring feels, how everything feels, your knee especially. And then now the right leg is going to be straight and the left knee is going to be bent. So I'm holding the back of my left knee and the outside of my foot to place my foot. And then I place my foot with the heel touching the, in, the inner leg of that same leg. So breathe. Now, same ideas apply here. If you have any problems with your knees, make sure that you've adjusted that or you've got something to put your knee on and all of the things that we know. And then sit up as tall as you can, put your right hand beside you to help turn your torso. So it's interesting side to side and may be quite different. You're turning toward your, um, your right leg now. Your left knee is down on something, and you're turning away from it, and your other hand is on the outside of your knee or your um, thigh or whatever, and then sit up really tall. So centering your spine front to back, side to side, you might feel like you should pull your outer left hip down, and then lift up through the spine and turn toward your right leg best you can. That means not just your chest and shoulders, but your ribs and your belly button. And lift up really tall. And then come back to center. So Janusha Shasan is a forward bend. And it is knee on, uh, head on the knee pose. But we're gonna go slow there. We're not in any hurry. So we're gonna set up again with our right knee bent and our, the setup is as perfect as you can make it, but now I wanna address the hips a little more. So when you bent your right knee, it took your right buttock back. And in this pose, the knee, the right knee that's bent is supposed to be in line with both buttocks. So how are we gonna arrange that? My way is to take my left buttock back and then they're lined up. I mean, my right buttock really didn't have a chance because I didn't let it be the dominant one. I brought the other one back, good. And then sit up straight and tall. So now really stretch out through your inner left leg. Feel like your inner left leg is really stretching and your right knee is supported or on the floor and very conscious. You don't ever let the consciousness leave your right knee as we start turning toward the left leg with our whole torso. And then if you can, and it's available to you, bring your right arm up. So stretch your right arm up. The other hand is on the floor beside you, probably. That is fine. And then hold your abdomen in and lengthen your spine and just take your hand, if you can, more toward the outer calf. More toward the outer calf. And so once you take your arm across, that really helps the twist. So there is the twist here too. Yeah, 
And so draw your abdomen over your left thigh best you can. And if it's available to you, you could take your hand a little closer to your ankle perhaps, or perhaps to your outer foot, but we're not, we're not in any hurry here to, because the spine still has to stay centered and lifted. I'm not rounding my spine. Don't round your spine. Lift your spine up. Lift your chest up. Breathe. If you can take both hands toward, hold on to your feet, do that. There's also a belt. If you need a belt, that's a great way to do it. You can hold the belt and you can lift your chest up. If you're using a belt though, I find that you have to um, work it from the spine angle. You still want your chest really lifted. Press through your inner left leg and then undo and go to the second side. Where is the forward bend? The forward bend never comes until the spine is lengthened and feels really comfortable. So now your left knee is in the Janusha position and you wanna draw your right buttock back. If that works for you, it works for me really well because um, we, I learned this from, uh, and it wasn't Gail, but it was somebody that had trained in New Zealand, uh, trained for Iyengar in New Zealand, and she said, and I think this is correct, that the knee and both buttocks should be in line, and that's a challenge. But now lift your left arm up. So from the hip to the fingertips on the left side, just stretch up and then turn toward your right leg and take your hand toward your outer calf. So if you take your hand toward your outer calf, don't just take your hand, take your ribs and your belly button and your chest. And then if you can walk your hand more toward the ankle, you do that. And then if you can hold on to the outer foot, you do that. If you need a belt, you grab your belt. So this is just about being long in the spine while the legs are quite purposeful. So your left knee, your right leg, very strong. Torso lifts, Hand, both hands can come to the foot perhaps. Lift your chest. Lift your chest without lifting your shoulder skin and breathe and breathe. And then come back up and straighten your legs. So now um, we're going to try to come forward a little bit, but I'm going to show, I'm going to use a chair and, because I think that that's a good option for many of us is a chair because for you to come forward and I can come forward and put my head on my knee, I can, but I'm not going to right now because um, I don't want, I, want, I don't want to encourage you to do that. That would not be right for you. Um, so a chair or something to place your head on would be, on, would be great. So we're going to bend our right knee, stretch our left leg, and, and move the right buttock back so that everything is lined up best we can. It's not, never going to be perfect, I suppose. And then stretch through your inner right leg and draw. If you're going to use a chair, which I think is a wonderful option, you bring it towards you. And then um, if you're going to use it, so I'm just showing with the chair because I think this is nice. I'm going to put my elbows on the chair and I'm going to just draw my spine in and up. One thing I would say, and Diane, you're going to notice this, this is a lot on the hamstring. So you want to make sure that you're not overstretching the hamstring on the extended leg. Certainly the bent knee is not a problem. It's the extended leg. So you can bend that a little bit. But turn your whole torso toward your um, left leg. So I'm not marrying you anymore. I'm doing what you're doing. And so my elbows are on, are on a chair, but not but then my spine is lifting in. Don't round your back yet. Don't round your back. Lift your spine in and up. If you're holding your foot now, that's the other option, is you're holding your foot and your chest is up. Do you see that? There's this or there's the other way. Because now 
We're gonna bend the elbows and we're gonna put our head on our knee or we're gonna put our head on the chair. And now aren't you glad you chose the chair? Yes, it's so good. Because if you chose the chair, if you chose to put your head on your knee, it's because you know this pose and you know how good it feels to do that. But if you don't feel good in it, then the chair is an option. Don't forget about your, your uh, right knee. Your right knee is still quite a big feature of the pose and your torso turning away from that right knee is a huge feature of the pose. Then you're coming forward, head on the knee. And then carefully come up from all that and straighten your right leg. So now you kind of know what your, if you made your choices the way you're happy about them. So now you're sitting on your lift again if you need a lift and you're bending your left knee and bringing it down. So I'm showing you with the chair and you can't see my left leg. I'm changing the, I'm taking my right buttock back to line up with my left buttock. And then if I'm using a chair, I'm putting my elbows on the chair, but, not, but now I'm kind of rounding my back. I don't want to do that. I want to lift my chest up. I want to take my spine in toward the front body a little bit and breathe. And that's true if you're holding your foot. If you're holding your foot, you're lifting your chest up and your front back, uh, the back of your body is going toward the front of your body, spine toward the front of your body, lift up. If you, and then you're going to bring your head down to either your knee or onto the chair or onto lots of blankets and bolsters. You know, that's the other thing. It's just how many props you have for this. John Shishasan, head to the knee. Good. Good. Carefully come back up. Straighten both legs. Straighten both legs. And then uh, dog pose. Dog pose with, so after Janashashasan, and you know, if you're new to Janashashasan, it's a very challenging pose. If you're experienced in Janashashasan, it's a very challenging pose. You kind of have to really keep your spine in your mind and lift it. Now in dog pose, we're going to just restore the length of our spine, if we felt in any way that we uh, did anything to our back, not that we did anything bad, but we just want to be as aware as we can as we stretch, stretch, stretch our legs, our arms, and our torso. Um, breathe, dog pose. Good. Yeah, really nice. So what you can't see, but I can see, is how nice the dog poses look after John Shoshasa. Are we just so happy we're not doing John Shoshasa? No, we've really, we've really worked on the aspects of our spine that help us here and it's beautiful. That's really good. So your hands are pressing, your shoulders are lifting away from that action. Your abdomen is lengthening away from your chest, legs are strong. And then carefully, carefully come down. And then we're going to sit in wide legs. So, uh, Upa Vista Konasana. So, if you, if you need a blanket under your buttocks for this, have one. Uh, if you have very um, stretchy hamstrings, then you don't need one. You cannot be in this pose, though, if your back, you need to sit on the lift if your back was look like this. If you, if you would be, you know, too, it would be too much for you. Then you lift your buttocks up because really it has to look like this. It's going in and up. Take your legs wide. And again, wide is a term that we use uh, 
we use the word and it, we don't define it. We used to define it. It used to be wide is four feet or, you know, we don't do that anymore because we just figure you have to make your choice here. Take your butt flesh though and broaden it away from your inner legs so that you've got some purchase on your sit bones. And then your hands can be behind you to create this lift of your spine. So when you lift your spine up, you should feel the back of your legs relax down. Relax the back of your legs down. If you can feel your hamstrings on the floor, back of your knees, your calves, if you feel that, now bring your hands in front of you and lift your chest up. So the strong message in all these poses today, whether we were coming forward or whether we were standing up, is our lengthened spine, chest lifts. Now turn, I will mirror you, turn towards your right leg, both hands on either side of your knee, and breathe. Keep your awareness now strongly in your left leg as you turn just gently with your abdomen, with your ribs, with your chest, toward your outstretched right leg. So you're still sitting straight up. You're still sitting straight up. And you're just moving gently to the side. The spine is centered. Come back to the center. Use the abdominal strength to come back. And now to the other side. Just keep your right leg, your right buttock very aware as you go towards your left leg. Spine is up, belly button's moving toward the leg, spine is in, breathe, and then come back to center. And now take your left, uh, your right hand beside your hip and take your left arm up. That's only if this is good for you, because maybe this would be better. If, you're, if your shoulder bothers you, this is not always so much fun. It would be better to keep your hand on your hip and turn. So you don't have to, you don't have to lift your arm. Of course, lifting your arm, if it feels good, it feels really good. So stretch up through your hand and your left buttock is down. And then turn gently towards your right leg and take your hand. And so you're leaning now a little bit towards your right leg, but your hand is stretching toward where the ceiling and the wall meet. Try to do that with the awareness into your left leg, your left buttock. So the side body is lengthening, the left side body is lengthening. From the hip down, the buttock down, the leg down, and then come back to center. So, you know, if you could take your arm up, it feels good. So other side, right arm up, right leg down. I say right leg down, both legs down, but you know, the minute you turn away from this leg, it could, it could lose the plot. So we're turning now toward our left leg. Our right leg is firmly down and we're just turning a little bit and then we're taking our, we're leaning, but we're not collapsing. We're lengthening and we're taking our right hand to where, where the ceiling and the wall meet. So breathe, just breathe. Oh, did you lose your right buttock? Keep it down, keep your right buttock down and then come back to center. Sitting really tall, take your left hand in front, your right hand behind, and turn gently, gently towards your right leg. So your spine is lifted and centered and your abdomen is firm, hold your abdomen, and then take your left hand a little further in front of you and take your right arm up and over your head. So you're looking towards your right leg and you're stretching your right hand towards your left foot. Um, not such that you're collapsing your left side body. Keep your left side body long, breathe and lengthen. And then come back up, holding your abdomen. Don't ever come back up without addressing your lower back by holding your abdomen in. Take your right hand forward, your left hand behind and then look toward your outstretched left leg. So you're looking toward your outstretched left leg and turning your torso. And then breathing, breathing, you're gonna take your arm up and over your head. So 
you're going toward your right. Oh, whoops, sorry. I said that wrong. Your one hand stays out in front, the other one goes over. <laughs> good, good. So turn towards your leg that you're twisting forward and stretch. Yeah, so yeah, good. It's a beautiful, this is a nice, this is for the lower back. This is for the lower back and all of these things should be good. That's great, that's great. And then come back down. Good, do we do that? Let's just try that a second time because I goofed up on the instructions. So let's take our right hand in front, no, our left hand in front and our right hand behind. And then just take the right hand out in front and take the right arm over your head toward the left. When you're not, when you're mirroring and you're not actually doing the pose, things can need a little more clarification and then undo that, and then take your right hand forward, your left hand back, and then take your right hand out a little bit, and your left arm over your head towards your right foot. So now we're it on both sides evenly, and then undo, and set up for Shavasana, either with your, um, you could take your legs up the wall, you could take your legs onto a chair. You could take a bolster under your knees. You know, whatever you like for Shavasana, set up. Set up for your Shavasana. <clears throat> and then once you lie down, Make sure that you have chosen the right prop for your head to be on. So maybe a small blanket. Not everybody needs a blanket under their head, I know, but most of us do. So you make your choice. If you do put your head on a blanket, make sure it's your head and your neck. And then once you lie down, then you let your back just accept the rest of your body. So you lie down on your back and then you really feel your back sometimes. So lengthen your lower back. Make sure you feel like your back is long. And then, then once you do relax, take your hands beside you, palms up. And generally, the hands are a little ways away from your hips. You're, um, you don't want to actually touch your side body with your arms, but you don't necessarily want your arms so wide either. So there's where they can be, uh, palms up, thumbs down a little bit, and then you can just soften your body as best you can. So relax the back body skin down. And that doesn't need a lot of um, encouragement because we like that feeling of just letting our back body skin. So the bikes, of course, are on the floor. The calves are on the floor. The heels are on the floor. Shoulders and the back of the head. The rest of the back is not necessarily on the floor. It's not necessarily touching the floor. So allow the skin on the back body to just really soften. So that skin that's not literally touching the floor is still releasing down. And the front body is draping center sideways. Imagine your spine right in the center and just imagine that both sides of your body were relaxing away from that center in the front. And that includes your face, your chest, your ribs, your abdomen, and then your legs are um, just really relaxed and probably the feet are rolling to the side. That's fine, that's fine. Just allow your body to accept this very deep rest. So allow your forehead skin to relax towards your eyebrows and allow your chest to stretch into your fingertips. So soft though. So soft. So right across your chest. 
And as your chest is stretching, just gently releasing towards your hands, release the center of your face toward the temples and the earlobes and the jaw. Relax your tongue to the lower palate. So your face is neutral. Your face has no expression. Your body is soft. Everything is soft. Just inhale softly and exhale softly. So your spine, which we've been stretching, 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 and lengthening, lengthening, is now just completely soft and relaxed. But all the nerves of the spine have been energized, activated, and all of the, um, the hormones that were um, activated, all the neurotransmitters, everything that in, in, in our body, you know, all the molecules in the blood, all of these things that got activated, and they did, you're now resting. And the resting aspect of this is so profound because sometimes to rest after activation is quite different. Just allow your body to accept all of this. It's the energy, it's prana that you created yourself. That is the beauty of yoga, is that all these poses create these beautiful different uh, animals and different ways of behaving with the spine, but all of them then later have this benefit into your entire body. Just let go. Gradually now begin to increase your inhalation, just a little bit. So the inhalation will be slightly fuller, not a lot. And the exhalation will be nice and soft and a little bit longer. And then draw a slightly deeper inhalation into your lungs, into your whole body, and then release that breath in the exhalation a little bit longer. And now take your, bend your elbows, place your hands on your abdomen and thank your body. When you're ready, just gently, softly turn to your right, rest with your head on your arm. So we're not in any hurry. We want to retain the length of our spine, the softness of our consciousness now, so distributed throughout our whole body. Look down toward the floor and press with your hands to come up. Just come up really carefully and sit up straight and tall. Namaste. I bow to the goodness within you, 